there's a doorway you go through behind you here. We're designing this suit for use at um, High Seas, which is a Mars analog. It's a practice of what we'd eventually like to do on Mars. Um, what the suit will do is to help the uh, simulated astronauts there more realistically do their extravehicular activities or EVAs. That's when they go outside and have to do activities outside the habitat. And this is sort of our first full up test with the uh, full suit together. So we've got these quick release pins here so that the face shield can come off very easily. Oh, I can hear you all now. We're going to turn the blower off first. Even people inside of NASA can't routinely get access to a real spacesuit sometimes. Real spacesuits are millions of dollars a piece and they come with a whole crew of people to make sure that they function properly. Obviously, we don't have resources for that. And in fact, most researchers can't use a real spacesuit for their uh, simulated missions. So we really were trying to create something that was affordable. This spacesuit that we built is roughly $10,000 in materials and equipment, not counting all the labor that went into it. So the suit itself um, consists of several components. I've got what's called a hard upper torso or a hut. And that's the big main part of the suit. It's carbon fiber with some soft parts. It's very important to be able to simulate the Martian spacesuit environment for a couple of reasons. Um, whenever we're testing technologies outside of the habitat, they have to be able to work um, in such a way that an astronaut wearing a suit can use it. Um, one thing I noticed while wearing the suit today, it's also very isolating. So you don't want to just go outside in your street clothes while on this simulation because real astronauts wouldn't be able to do that. So there's a certain psychological aspect that comes from being isolated from the environment as well that's important that we simulate.